Well, one of the real pleasures of uh, working at Bradford City is that you can be walking around the stadium doing your normal jobs and uh, you, you bump into real legends. And I'm delighted to say that we've got one with us this afternoon. Terry Orth, welcome back to Bradford City. Hi, James. Nice to see you. You're in the area filming uh, for the for the uh, for the next few days with uh, a Welsh television programme. Uh, when, when were you last here at Bradford City? I was here about 18 months ago. Um, I watched the game here. Obviously, I know Stuart very well. I know Greg very well. So if ever I want to come here, I just ring them. But I get busy with Leeds United, you know, doing talking there, and sometimes I go uh, away with them. But uh, it's a pleasure to be back. You know, you know the ground is unbelievably great. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't knock the ground compared to when we were here. Yeah. You know, it was. Um, there's only a little stand there, a little stand on the far side, and this side wasn't so big either. But uh, good times. Yeah, and, and part of a really successful sort of setup behind the scenes as well. And as you say, you still see Stuart and Greg, or you speak to them on the phone. And uh, we've had in the past, you know, we've had some wonderful days down here with our legend series. In fact, just on this bench, we were discussing uh, earlier on. Bobby Campbell sat there holding court when you had Mark Ellis, Ian Ormondroy, John Hendry, you know, big characters. But you know, Bobby was the biggest of the lot of them. And you'd be very welcome back any time to come and speak to a, in our suites. I'd and, love uh, to. I'd love to. Um, I know John comes here quite a lot. Then, yeah, he? yeah, he, he comes to Leeds quite a bit. Um, but the team that we had here, they were great lads. Yeah, you know they were characters, all of them. You know, McCall and Abbott, two <laughs> characters. <laughs> we and still got them. <laughs> yeah. Then you had uh, Mark Ellis, John, uh, a lad called Teddy Gray, um, and they, you know, they they gelled as a team. Yeah. Somehow, <laughs> odds and sods, but they gelled. You know, good side. But, you know, quite a few of them went on to bigger things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'd like to think it, that we were part of that, yeah. you know, for their careers. But uh, it was good. I enjoyed my time here. Everyone has the same wry smile on the face, and then look, the look into the distance, as if to say, "I've just thought of something, but I probably can't say it on camera." And <laughs> whenever you speak to any of the, the the boys from the sort of mid to late eighties and so on and so forth. They all pause and think about that. But you mentioned in the team there the likes of Stuart and Greg who are here now. Did did Stuart ever suggest when he was a player, obviously clearly a leader, did you did you ever think you and Trevor or any of the other backroom staff think there's a manager in him one day? Well when I came back from Vancouver and I joined Bradford, um, I wasn't completely fit, so I was playing in reserves. And Stuart was only a young young kid really, 16 years of age. And I said to him, if you get in trouble just give me the ball. <laughs> he looked at me and he said, why should I give you the ball? <laughs> so we were having an argument first before we went on the pitch. I said, well, just give me the ball. <laughs> and uh, you, you told me another little ditty off camera as well about Bobby Campbell when he missed a couple of sitters away at was it South, South End. End, yeah. And uh, we came into the dressing room afterwards and I said to Bobby, <clears throat> Bob, you don't have to slash at them. Just side foot them in the back of the net. And he looked at me and he said, how many goals have you scored? <laughs> so I just shut up. I thought, leave it. Um, you still live in Leeds, so as you mentioned, you, you, you're still um, um, familiar with the area. You still live in the area, etc. Some fond memories of this place. You mentioned that whilst the pitch hasn't changed its location, the four stands have changed. But um, some really fond memories. One of my, I was just telling the lads there. One of my biggest memory, and it's a, it's a it's a stupid one. We played Spurs here and we drew one one. And the dressing room, the waiting dressing room, I don't, I don't know what it's yeah. like now. But the waiting dressing room was tiny, it was cramped. Yeah. And they just changed the substitutes from one to two, so it was even more cramped. So after the game, David Ginola came out, and he's a good looking fellow, didn't he? You know? <laughs> and he's just got his trousers on, and he's got a towel, and he looked at one of the apprentices and said, Where's, where's the hairdryer? <laughs> and the, the little lad looked at him and went, this is Bradford City, mate. <laughs> yeah, we don't have air dryers. No. Yeah. No, it's, it's a wonderful club. And listen, it's been lovely to speak to you. Nice to speak to you. I really James. appreciate you coming back, Terry. You're very oh, welcome on behalf of Bradford City, and I'm sure many of the viewers that'll be watching this all over the world will be delighted that uh, they've had the opportunity as well. Good luck to you and your family, Thanks and you're so very welcome anytime. Cheers, James. Thank you. Bye bye. Nice seeing you.